Dude, we're on. Huh? Was, uh, uh, hello, What's New up, York. YouTube? All right, man. I don't know. Happy Thursday, everybody. Even, uh, our channel says Wednesday. You're a little day behind. Mm. It feels like a Wednesday. You're working hard. Working hard. All right, Woo! so today, fish don't just die. They don't die. Uh, they don't just like keel over, pop. I know it's a common belief. I don't know that fish just die. Yeah. People think of all kinds of they different disappear. degrees. Husbandry. Yeah. They think of uh, like nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, I had another one in here. Let's see here. Uh, chemistry, polluted water. Those are all legitimate reasons. Very few people think about habitat mm. uh, and the aquascape and how that relates to aggression and all the other things we're going to talk about today. So mm. I think by the end of this that uh, habitat will make it into the mix as to One of maybe the top, top reasons there are ways to save your fish. Okay, of those four reasons, chemistry, pollutions, habitat, uh, husbandry, and nutrition, which probably contributes to the most deaths in the tank. Mm. I'm dying to hear what you guys think. I know, uh, not just now, but I think I'll ask that question at the end of I this think, as well. That's good. Uh, good comeback too. Yeah. Uh, you know, and all uh, on top of that, you know, we're going to talk about. You're, you're also going to see today. Like I've been doing a lot of testing on Aquascapes. Uh, I did a video on the 24-hour cure. Also uh, working on a video for seven day cure and all the types of adhesives and glues that work. Uh, some of our favorites, some tips and tricks that I've learned from building all those aquascapes with all different kinds of stuff like that. You're gonna learn some tips that, you know, Ryan took two weeks to do an, uh, or two months or a month, two months in total to do these two different aquas aquascapes, HNSA and the NSA. Uh, we picked up a lot of tips on those. I gotta so. tell you, I switched how I use adhesives in the middle yeah, you did. Uh, because I saw it, your, your investigate and I threw the cement out. Yeah, and then when you <laughs> actually use some of that strong material like you saw in the 24 hour cure, uh, there's tips that you learn for using epoxy. So if epoxy is your route, we've got some tips in here uh, for how to make that stuff look uh, decent. All right, man, so let's jump right in. So this is the term that for, I don't know, all my reefing decades, uh, oh. I've called it an aquascape. Every, I, Almost every single person in the hobby. Yeah, so I, I mean, here's the question is, uh, are we building an aquascape or are we building a habitat? So, uh, and uh, like again, I'd love to hear you guys chime in. Are you building a habitat for everything that needs to live in there or are we building an aquascape? And here is the definition that yeah. I looked up when I found it. Aquascaping is the craft of arranging, uh, arranging aquatic plants, mm. as well as rocks, mm -hmm. stones, cave work, or driftwood in an aesthetically pleasing manner within an aquarium, in effect, gardening underwater. Interesting. It's gardening underwater, in a, and you're placing things aesthetically pleasing, I mean, this is 100% self-serving for you. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, it looks good to me. I, I got a bunch of photos here of some that I stole off of Instagram yeah. uh, because I thought they were uh, really inspiring to me in many ways. Yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of aquascape, you want beautiful. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about habitat in just a second. So if you could pull up that first uh, photo uh, in here. All right. I don't know who has anybody have seen this, but uh, this is amazing. an amazing tank. It's right? aquascaping not only in the way that the aquascape, the rock was built. Uh, you see a big jutting out ledge, a small island, but it's also aquascaped in a way that the corals are bonsai and trimmed. Color, it's gardening even. underwater. Yeah, and it's color. Oh, color yeah, color for sure. Even man, but negative space. All right, I want you to see how thought, how much thought this was really went into this because if you look at the next photo here. This is the basis of it. Wow. That's the actual rock work that, that, that he built. Or, or tree. she, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's like a little bonsai tree, you know? And then here is a, 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 like a before and after, right? You can see. Wow. Yeah, like so. Wow. That is, I wouldn't call this habitat by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there's only a couple fish in there for a reason. Uh, but, like, Beautiful, beautiful. Oh. Like, I'm, I'm I, not lying, dude. There's parts of this that I am going to use for inspiration with the 360 in the now. This is gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, I'm already thinking about going coal shopping, you know? <laughs> and so uh, this is 
where I want to take it. So mm. you can see another picture of a little bit of the you know progression here with the next one. Uh, actually, I think the next one looks the same. So yep. if you can hit the next one after that. There we go. Yeah, again, there's not a lot of fish in here. You can see how mm -hmm. it grew out. Big giant, super beautiful. Yeah, big giant swimmers that uh, you know these tangs and stuff that uh, you know. Should you be less concerned about some fish than not? There's definitely a difference when you're choosing fish and stuff when you're talking about habitat. So there's some mm -hmm. that can complement your aquascape in your underwater garden, uh, and you don't really have to pay attention to their habitat, except when you start adding a lot more and you start adding a larger diversity. This is something you actually brought up to me earlier, which I, I mean, like the conversation just unravels once you decide to have it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, and. You're like, well, what about the habitat for the corals? Well, you know what? In that photo, there was absolutely plenty of habitat for the corals. The yeah. corals, and there's wide open flow all around them. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful escape. Built with a purpose. Fish? No. <laughs> but there wasn't a lot of fish in there. And the reality is, is that was probably not the goal in mm -hmm. this case, was mm -hmm. to have a lot of fish. The goal was to build habitat for coral. And I would say uh, that, that was achieved before. What is habitat? We got to define the habitat portion. Okay, so there's actually a bunch of other photos here oh, of, of uh, more aquascaping stuff. Uh, this guy W L Marine, you see him on. Uh, I see him on Instagram all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's probably because I stop scrolling every time I see it. He <laughs> decides to show it to me over and over again. So you can actually buy these things. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go make them. People make this stuff, and, oh, yeah, and cool. you know they have. You know, this is absolutely habitat designed for coral. Yes. Right. Uh, it is like beautiful beautiful scape that is that kind of negative space look and you know it really allows you to plant corals in a way that water will surround them from every direction so for coral in many ways this is a really Ultimate. really cool solution you yeah. can see already how this could turn into that sps like uh, beautiful mm -hmm. stick scape that mm -hmm. we just saw uh, then even something more unique, right? So, wow. I mean, the globe here, like... It says, floating scape for an innovative marine fusion 10 take. Boom. Also called Coral Planet. Look what it turns into. <laughs> oh, my Bam. goodness. Yeah. God, that's so cool. Uh, you know, and then even, like, less expensive versions are more readily available. I mean, like, you can see them here. Oh, yeah. Like, the Life Rock stuff from Carib Sea, they yeah. started getting into those yeah, archways. Yeah. They're building these trees yeah, and the stuff. Tree. Yeah, the uh, yeah. tree. Uh, Thomas did a video on the tree and the different ways you can configure it. He actually made it look really cool. All right. So you can see, you know, a little bit of what aquascape is supposed to look mm -hmm. like. And you're aquascaping, again, uh, the craft of arranging aquatic plants as well as rock, stone, cave work, or driftwood mm -hmm. in an aesthetically pleasing manner within an aquarium and affect gardening underwater. What they're doing is gardening underwater. That's 100% uh, of garden 100%. underwater. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. so I'm dying to know. Like, there'll be probably a 50-50 mix uh, in the comments today of... You know what? I aquascape and I build habitat for fish, or I build it for coral, or I'm building it for both. And you know, even if you guys could give a couple of tips to each other about how you do it for each way or what your priorities mm -hmm. are, it's probably helpful to everybody. That aquascaping uh, is when I think of planted freshwater tanks, same thing. Like they're like the definition is saying, you know, the logs, the tedious trimming of the trees and all that. And then when you look at like the habitat, there's in, in those types of, when they do have fish in there, it's usually like a, a giant swath of like one species mm -hmm. where they're going to be happy in that space. But it's the aquascape that matters. Definitely the, mm. a lot of times in like the freshwater ones, they don't even put fish in them yeah, that's because true. the fish just stir up all the dust yeah, and stuff. Yeah, sand, waterfalls, no fish. It's only about be beautiful aquascape, yeah. right? You know, they build sometimes like the waterfall, sand waterfalls oh, and stuff cool. in it. <laughs> okay, so now the word is habitat now. Uh, and this actually was like an epiphany that I had while I was shooting that last video. And actually it was in the end and we moved her up to the front. Yeah. I was like, you know what? This is the truth. And it's, if you go to a zoo... Mm -hmm. They don't call these things uh, aquascapes or whatever. They call each one of them, whether it be for a lizard or a fish, mm -hmm. it's a habitat. There's yeah, cold water species, corals, habitat, the large giant like shark habitat, or even uh, down, even to the mammals, uh, lion habitat, gorilla habitat. You know, they're trying to mimic uh, some of their natural surroundings uh, in a way that makes them feel comfortable. You know, it reduces aggression, reduces stress. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just trying to make, uh, you I mean, you took them out of their natural environment, so we'll try to provide them with something that more mimics their natural environment. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. I'm, I'm cautious, I'm saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. 
There are good zoos and there are bad zoos. Mm. There are good reef tanks and there are bad reef tanks, right? So yeah, the, the ape stayed alive for a long time, but was he happy? You know, yeah. or did he stay, was he sick more often than mm. not? And then almost certainly, you know, in relation to the habitat. I went to uh, a zoo on the north side of the Big Island in Hawaii once, mm -hmm. right? And it was the coolest thing ever. I think I was actually from Minnesota. <laughs> But they had these big white tigers, right? Huh. And he was explaining to me, like, why these tigers don't pace in the exact same circle. Like, I was asking, like, why do your guys look happy? Yeah. And he's like, well, the enclosure is really big, but also they make special attention to the fact that if the tiger stands up, he couldn't possibly see the entire er area. And so they're, they naturally like need to go check out, make sure that uh, nothing else is here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then they brought, uh, uh, because he's from Minnesota, I don't know, yeah. we got a bond. Uh, he brought me in back and fed him whole chickens in front of me. It was a crunch, crunch, crunch. crunch. <laughs> uh, it was the craziest thing. But yeah, effort well, into habitat yeah. produced a happier animal. And that is not the case for those white tigers in some other areas. I mean, you can think about uh, a human, too. And uh, if I was stuck in one room, flat plain, I can see every single thing around me. And that's the only place I have to go. I would go out of my mind, stressed, nuts, crazy. Uh, I have got nothing to do here. There, there's, I, I've seen it all and I, can, I don't even have to move to see it all. I can instantly think about that in some aquascapes as well. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When you start looking like, <laughs> You, you could sit at one, uh, one edge of an NSA or just a rock bottom or maybe even rock wall and I go, oh, I've seen everything there's to see out here. Okay, so this is why, I mean, we were talking about NSAs for a while and, mm. and I'll be straight because the thing was delivered to me. Top Shelf built a beautiful, beautiful escape for me. Aesthetically right? pleasing. Kevin did an amazing job, man. An inspiration to us all, especially me. Yep. Uh, and like, man, this is, I like, and then I just sat in my garage trying to recreate it with Marco Rock because I, I like want to share a path to this. It shouldn't be only for me, right? right? <laughs> and so, like, well, how do you create this? And then we went off and created it. But like, I will tell you, uh, all the way up until just now, like, ah, I was building it for me. Yeah, and I was building yeah. it to look beautiful. I want it to look like this and have depth and have height and. I mean, you still manage some of those uh, lessons that we learned from like WWC when it comes to how high you aquascape and planning for some corals and planning for coral real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, like this thing looks awesome when it's bare bones, just rock. Looks awesome when it's kind of covered in coral. Uh, but then you quickly found out like uh, the fish that you had in your 360 weren't happy. I walked in there yesterday and saw the fish in it. And like I did a little video on, on Facebook and like the word I used was joy man it brought joy to my life man just to see it i was so happy to see my pets here in the office and the scape looked beautiful under the uh you know actually the kessel lights are the only ones that turned on oh, yeah. had that cool shimmer in it and i uh, i don't know man i just like i'm so happy this is here you know mm. and i got to see him all the way so let me describe what the uh, when i googled what a habitat means the habitat definition is the place or environment where a plant or animal naturally or normally lives and grows. Right? That makes sense. Okay. Naturally. I looked for another one, and this is what Wikipedia said. In eco uh, ecology, the term habitat summarizes the array of resources, phys physical and biotic factors, that are present in an area, such as to support the survival and reproduction of a particular species. Uh, species habitat can be seen as a physical manifestation of its ecological niche. Mm. Thus, the habitat is a species-specific term. Species. Yeah. That's like the lowest level. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, <laughs> species, all yeah. the way down. So, like, you start to think about it, and, like, you think about it, like, uh, even in our, in our tanks, it's like the habitat is what's required for the health of the organism of a mandarin mm -hmm. or a sand-sifting goby mm -hmm. or a, a wrasse that lives in the sand or one that lives in rock. All these things are just different. Oh, even multiple, even multiple types of zebrasoma tangs, you know, mm -hmm. different. They've got the same body shape, they're, but they're different species. They come from different parts of the world that they're used to. Their environment, their habitat is completely different. All right. So 
this is the real question, right? Like, or we'll get to this actually in a second, but you can start to think about how you want to talk about this in the future. Are we talking about aquascapes? Are we talking about habitats? Is it a combination of both? Mm. But I thought we'd throw down what happens when we get either one wrong? Because I don't think there's a certain single person out there that is going to think about this in only black or white. It's, mm -hmm. you know, a you gray could. area of a combination of both. And sometimes I can actually achieve both really, really well. Sometimes it'll be leaning one direction or the other. But I what mean, happens when we get it wrong? I mean, if I'm, if I'm aquascaping, if you're thinking about it black and white, I'm aquascaping specifically for habitat, uh, I might end up with something that I'm like, hmm, dang. I mean, it's nice. It's just not like, it doesn't have that eye appeal that catches my eye when I look. We're going to share one where that happened to me. Yeah. Uh, well, we had to, I had to tear the NSA thing apart, or the HNSA apart because it got away from me. Yeah. And, and I'll share that, that video in a minute. Well, also, by the way, uh, after we get to this, we're gonna share some tips on actually, how, how you actually do this at home. So many tools here that were yeah, so useful. We're gonna share with you a bunch of stuff because yeah. there's actually, one of the pieces of it is, is you know, shorten the time length down because uh, there, there's a lot of steps that are actually just a lot easier if somebody just shows you what to do. Yeah. So we'll show you a few of those things. <laughs> All right, so what happens when you get either habitat or aquascape wrong? Uh, unless you throw the first one out. So, you know, when you get, uh, you know, oh, there you go. Throwing it together without thought or inspiration. That's basically like, I'm gonna, just going to take a bunch of rocks and pile them in there because I, uh, I'm not, not considering fish. I'm not considering coral placement. I'm not considering types of corals, types of fish, what they, what they want. Basically, this is like, a, I want tank and I want it now. Okay, so... When I say the wall look, there is two wall looks. There's a good looking wall look, mm -hmm. and then there's, I just threw the rock in and called it a day inside mm -hmm. of 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. Those are totally different things. I'm guilty yeah. of that. Yeah, okay, my <laughs> first tank was absolutely that. The rock piled up almost all the way to the ceiling. Everything was grown out of the top of it. I didn't really know any of the rules, no. and I, I thought that you know, I specifically asked TBS Aquatics for uh, rocks with holes in them and mm. caves. I didn't realize that you make, I, I, oddly enough, they were able to send that to me. Yeah. That's pretty rare. <laughs> you don't find actual caves in rocks yeah. very often, but yeah. they're actually able to find it. But even in that sense, I didn't realize that most of it you actually just create. Mm. So it, I fell into this category where by upgrading. So I was starting with my 40 breeder and I had a minimal amount of rock. Mm -hmm. uh, went to my 60 gallon a couple months later and I didn't have any extra rock. Uh, so I kept those stuff I had. And then a couple months after that went to a 125 and you know, I'm reefing on a budget back then. So to buy enough rock to fill my 125 when it came from a 40, uh, it was just something I, was, I couldn't pull the trigger on right then and there. So right off the bat, all I had was little tiny mound piles at the bottom of this big giant six foot 125 gallon tank. And I've got these, you know, five, six different fish swimming in sea of openness uh, with a little rock pile underneath of them. I mm -hmm. thought it was cool. I didn't know any better. I was yeah. for the time. Yeah, for the you time. Know? And the question is, is like, can you do better? Well, uh, can like. Yeah, just like, the, what's the path to that then? Right, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I would say that yeah, throwing it together without thought or inspiration. So go look for some inspiration. Mm. But somebody out there has created something really cool. It's not that hard to find, you know, Google Aquascape on... Reef on tank Aquascapes. Like either Google or Instagram aquascapes. or whatever. Everywhere. And somebody will say, you'll see one and say, oh, you, that's the one I want. You know, yeah. and like, I will, you don't have to copy it, it's just, some kind of inspiration mm. for, like, it also give you an idea of where the corals are actually going to go uh, and this and what the corals will look like. Because when you looked at that earlier one with the trig, uh, the tree twig on it, basically, yeah. you would have never thought that that was going to turn into what it did. I wonder how um, much planning had to go into what corals you were going to you were going to put there. Okay, so open and honest, I, I when I saw that the first time, I texted a few of my friends and asked, "Do you think that this is planned?" They, yeah, yeah, that they grew out the little colonies in a frag tank and then went and planted them on. Very well, uh, could have. Well, I thought that because it's really difficult. Here, let's, speculate, let's see yeah, again. speculate with us. Okay, well, I, I know the answer now because that when I went hunting, I then found that other shot, the before and after one. Uh, 
Uh, oh, the corals were frags when they were placed? Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, well, very clearly, uh, they no, grew, man, they've they grown out that way. They from little That is frags. an exceptional skill set, uh, right? Oh, man. As much as I want that, uh, I feel like I could do it. I, I don't know if I can. Well, you got to maintain it, man. It's bonsai yeah. now. Yeah, right? 100, oh yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. You have to be on top of trimming that thing constantly. Yeah, all right. Uh, save that top comment there. That's a really good one, Dave. Okay. Uh, uh, another one I'll talk uh, when we get this wrong, and this is wrong from the aquascape point of view, is an unnatural look. Right? Uh, aesthetically, you know, uh, to me personally, uh, a straight column with the flat, you know, uh, top or column, column, column in there, you know, if it doesn't have that natural look that when I, when I go watch uh, documentaries about the underwater ocean and the barrier reefs and all, all these different reefs and stuff like that's my inspiration for what I'm looking uh, for what I want in my own tank that's what I want to see and then when I see the Instagram posts like that last bonsai one I'm like ah, dang man that's what I want uh, so going with an unnatural look automatically for a knock from an aquascaping point of, uh, point of view uh, it I don't know if even you can uh, if it's even works for habitat I don't know how you could build an unnatural one that would work for habitat. So unnatural is kind of like a murky topic because, I mean, honestly, they're all unnatural. Yeah. None of them look like an actual reef wall in most cases. But like uh, like the moon one we saw just a second ago. Ah, you know, yeah. like does, is that one unnatural? But it was cool in its own right. You know, so yeah, it's 100% unnatural, but... But it's still awesome. Know, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't still know. Awesome. What I think of unnatural is often like it's if you're... If you're like distinctly going away from natural, meaning mm. like that that one that one we just looked at again, like took a natural approach of trying to build like a tree type shape and then you know grow essentially leaves on it right. almost right? Right, right, right. So it's emulating nature even though it's not emula emulating a reef tank per mm -hmm. se, and so it looks kind of natural from that perspective. What looks unnatural to me often is when you have angles and stuff that just doesn't exist in nature where i have like straight pillars straight you know and, and straight yeah and right angles yeah like right angles don't, don't exist, exist in, in nature nah, nope yeah and parallel lines you know hard and like if you have a, like a parallel line that just barely turns you know all Changes of a sudden it. it is no longer unnatural mm. as mm. this is you know yeah. so uh, i don't know I, I think that's one of the things to think about uh what about the SPS 50% rule? Oh, yeah, that's something we learned, uh, what, three, four years later after the 160 uh, grew out. And that 50% rule is, you know, building your aquascape higher than 50% or the halfway mark of your tank top to bottom, uh, not planning for three to six years down the road like the 160 when everything is just stuck uh, right at the top of the surface of the tank. And uh, I mean, you could bonsai it back down, eventually it's gonna go right back up there anyway. This is actually one of the biggest challenges is because if you're gonna do an FGS aquascape, like a lot of times like a LPS, you could get within a third of the top and be just mm. fine. Uh, but with uh, the SPS stuff starts to grow so fast and then it just like starts to shade everything below it and it gets so big, it's growing out of the water mm -hmm. and the water changes are pain in the butt, the whole thing. Mm. Uh, the problem is, is it looks incomplete before you put the corals on. And oh, it will yeah. look incomplete for maybe 18 months. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. 24. Yeah. Uh, and so, and this is also the group of people that are probably the most advanced and want it to look as good as possible, as fast as possible. And you're asking them to take patience and understand that the tank is going to look relatively empty, yeah. you know, because you know it's not about where we are today, but mm. where we're going. This is uh, uh, exactly what's happening in the 750. The mm -hmm. 750, we purposefully built the aquascape no higher than 50%. And here we are two and a half-ish years into it, and now we're on the verge of the corals starting to explode. But there's still mini colonies down there. Like the, the, the water column is, you know, still, you know, maybe three quarters of the way is water column. The corals haven't even started to get up past the halfway point. A lot of them point. are based out like this. Yeah. But they're still yeah. kind of short. But eventually, knowing what the 160 did after like four, four years, we that will end up going straight up and filling that entire space. 
Okay, by the way, people asked for an update of the WWC tank. I'll do it right after this. So, oh, cool. uh, go to Instagram or Facebook, yeah, uh, BRS, BRS TV, TV guy. guy. Yeah. Uh, you'll find me, and I'll, I'll do that right after it's this. It's gorgeous. It's uh, out really yeah, good. Yeah, we haven't updated in so long, I don't know why. Uh, but I'll share with you what it looks like today because it's awesome. But yeah, you can start to see where you can definitely see now. Like, if you looked at it a year ago, you say this tank looks empty. You can see now why, if you look at those pictures, why. Yep. A year from now, you're going to say, oh, oh, I get it. Yeah, there wow, it is. it's beautiful. Yep. Wow, it's the right proportion. Mm -hmm. I, you planned for the growth. It's about where you're going, not where you started. Yeah, and oh, here, yeah, it'll be three and a half years later. Okay. That's a, that's a tough test in patience for, for me. Like, I have yeah. to fill that space. Uh, I don't know. But it's after hard, seeing man. it firsthand in two tanks. Uh, well, what are you going to do? Keep making the same mistake over and over again, yeah, though? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so this one is also interesting. Uh, glue and epoxy everywhere. This uh, actually was in my in my 60 gallon tank right now too, um, that I didn't plan for. And that's you know, this almost unnatural like you know, when you do gobs of super glue in your aquascape and you don't do anything to like try to cover it up or cover the joints, uh, there is a shiny piece of glue, gob of glue, that you will see every single time you look into your tank. Uh, Is this the ICE gel that you were using? I used ICE gel, and, uh. and it did. It, so even in my Aquascape testing, uh, there's a difference between uh, the Jurassic gel in the way that it cures and the BRS gel in the way that it cures. One is cloudy, one is like a mirror type shine sheen over the top of it. It was the weirdest thing when they, when they clear out, but that sheen, catches your eye every time you look in the tank. So my experience is that ICE gel gets that like weird bubbly sheen mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's really glassy and like glass-like. Yes. Whereas the BRS was just like kind of like frosted, it does. diffused. Yeah. Look. I mean here, and here's my tank too, uh, almost two years later, the 60 gallon in my office. Uh, and I don't notice them as much because there's spiborbid worms all over there and there's coralline encrusting and there's algaes in there and you know, it's starting to cover up on its own, but I took zero effort in to hide the joints. Just mm -hmm. wasn't a thing on our radar back then. Okay, so like for me, this is this is a pet peeve of mine, right? Like, it looks totally unnatural if I can see all the places where you glued it together. <laughs> That's true. Right, and, and yeah, eventually a lot of it will get covered in either brown gunk or coralline algae. Yeah. But coralline algae will only hit wherever the light is, and often it's, you know, underneath here that you glued it, yeah. you know, and that will not get light and it'll take forever and I have to see it. And there's tons of ways around that, uh, so why not use one? I mean, the tips uh, that we've learned from hiding joints and that we'll share here in a bit, uh, it, the time and effort that it takes to hide the joints is so minimal that it's worth doing before you put that thing in your tank, mm -hmm. if you're just using glue. Pruning and coral bonsai. Right, that is another one. When you think about aquascaping, we think about it in reefing often as uh, uh, just how the rock work laid out. But in freshwater, it is one is actually way, way more about the plants. Oh, they, there's specific yeah. plants that are planted in very specific places on the those, scenery. Yeah, just to create this, and just because of the growth pattern and how uh, often they'll need trimmed. Uh, but I mean, there's people that spend hours and days and months on planning out those plants. So I think one of the reasons that the reefing hobby doesn't think about it the same way is because in freshwater, those plants actually grow really fast. Ah. Or you can even buy them in the size that you would create this thing overnight, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so in reefing, it's Time. like build the aquascape and then wait you know, a year or, or more, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so it's not really often viewed as the same thing, but there's no way that tanks that we showed earlier would look like that unless somebody was pruning them and guiding mm. them to look like perfect little uniform corals. Yeah, well, and then, and this goes back to that habitat versus aquascape when, uh, when you're considering it from a coral's perspective, in that if you don't do this pruning or coral bonsaiing, sometimes you'll end up with the mortalities because they're chem because they're fighting against each other. They're ones growing over the top of some. It's been, uh, the, the coral you didn't expect that's uh, encrusting over the bottom hits the base of this large acro colony and starts killing it from underneath or taking over its, its space. Like, this, uh, this pruning and coral bonsai is a part of that uh, habitat uh, and maintaining the habitat for your corals. Okay, so another one, mm. flow. 
right? Yeah. yeah. So when we think about, oh, actually, flow probably adds a little, is not in the right place here. <laughs> Let's, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Okay. In terms of habitat now instead of aquascaping. Now, aquascaping yeah. was all this stuff about beautiful, and you can come up, we could probably talk about it for three hours. Yeah, a bunch of them. Uh, but now it transitions the conversation a little bit about uh, habitat. One of them is flow. You know, there's all kinds of things that goes in habitat, not just like nooks and crannies to live in. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you see big open areas, man, the water flow is definitely better. Now, habitat for the fish or habitat for the coral, right? Yeah. That big open flow is what's best for the coral, for sure. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when you see that big tree again, I mean, we keep saying it, bring it up again. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, there's water that comes from every single direction when it comes to flow in these corals. And for SPS, that's what they need. Yeah, water is flowing in and around all these things. And there's part of the reasons probably that he can get these corals to grow in a uniform manner. Oh, yeah. 100%. Right? Yeah. That they're not like, you know, getting blown one direction or the other. It's part of the whole equation of creating a habitat that is good for the coral. You look at the growth it. patterns on every colony. They're all rounded. They're even on all sides. That's just indi indicative of good flow. Okay, so I'm actually going to go out uh, on a limb here, right? I was so inspired by seeing this thing. Like, that skill set is beyond my current skill set. <laughs> me too, right? 100%. In the same way that when Kevin from TSA gave me the uh, NSA Aquascape, mm. that was beyond my skill set at the time, yeah. right? Uh, and you know, I spent a lot of hours, man. I got probably a month and a half of only focusing on that. Mm. Uh, two weeks on my vacation, two weeks here for another one, and another two weeks on another one. Now I feel like I can replicate it pretty, you know, pretty well using the tools that are available. I want this for the 360, and Ooh. so I'm gonna sign up for um, this. I'm gonna yes, I'm gonna show it again. Oh, so we're looking at it in the other screen here. Yep. It's the same thing. Oh, yeah. like I'm this gonna, is achievable with your current Aquascape. It is. Yeah. Yeah, the open Aquascape. I'm gonna sign up for this, right? But I'm uh, also gonna tell you something in just cool. a second here. Oh, he's gonna blow it up for oh, us yeah. all, so you can see it. Uh, but I want to up my game, and I want to learn something new. I want to try something new. Yeah. And this is let's this do is it. the next level for your SPS dominated system. And and the tank is big, man. So this will be hard. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you'll be. Yeah. You know, thank God you got all those steps on every single side because you'll need them to prune and keep pruning. How many fish can you see in here, though? I see the one, the little clown down there. Another one. Another one. I've, there's two damsels up top. Yeah, like I say about oh, and then five, that five one, fish yeah. in there. Five, six. Okay, so uh, this is the other piece of it. Uh, this is uh, what I call an NSA. Still, there are st there are plenty. It's a 360 gallon tank, so there's there's habitat in there. It's just not the type of habitat where if you wanted to turn it into uh, like you know 40 fish in this tank, oh, yeah. right, it starts to push the limits of mm -hmm. that, right? So. I think I'm gonna leave it to basically the Just fish that are in there. A minimal amount of fish. I don't know, I might pick up one or two or something more, I, I don't know, but like I'm not gonna push the limits on, on the fish. Uh, so right now I got a gem tang in there, I mm. have uh, a yellow tang, I have those two personatus angels, yep. I have the uh, yellow uh, anthea, Hawaiian anthea, I have a pinstripe uh, wrasse, I have the Johnson wrasse, I have a uh, white-tailed uh, tang, and I think that's it. I think those will get you, uh, and they're s relatively small for yeah. their potential size that they can get down the road. So well, there, I think. They'll be uh, big, giant display fish by the time it's all said and done. And so when I'm thinking about habitat, I'm thinking now, I'm thinking about the coral, right? Now, you're going to see something different as we explain the HSNA for, for fish. You're going to see a, a totally different type of habitat. But like, go into it eyes wide open, know what the goal is, and then go try to achieve it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what? Like, I can't wait to see how well I can emulate something like that because that is the dream. Yeah. And I want you guys to share it along with me and hopefully learn how to do it for yourselves as well. Uh, all right, I mean, that's the big thing is if, if we can learn it here, that means that we get to then learn how to share it so all of you guys can do it as well bonsai SPS garden in your own house. All right, so now moving on to the fish habitat though, what about wrasses and sand? They need sand. Well, 
some do. Not all of them. But. Not all of them. But yeah, some do. Uh, and that, oh, there's brasses. What was that rest that you had for the 160 that we had to put a dish of sand in the frag tank while we waited for him? Oh, I don't know. Was that a yellow, like a chorus rest? No, or? it was not. A, is it not? Wasn't exquisite or anything. Uh, I've whatever he was, he was radiant? gorgeous. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I think it was the radiant. And they sleep in the sand. Like they will bury, bury themselves in the sand and sleep there. Well, if you don't have sand, guess what? You can't have that fish. It's actually really sad because they'll just keep diving into the bottom and mess up the face, <laughs> oh. you know. Uh, and so, like, you're, you definitely didn't think about that fish when you chose to got, get it and didn't provide the habitat of, mm. of sand. But what about that video that uh, Elliot shared with us about the wrasses that live in the rock fields as well? Oh yeah, it's. Just, I mean, there's hundreds. Well, not hundreds, but you know, dozens of feet of ocean above them. But and it's just rock rubble bottoms. But mm -hmm. here you go. You see those little wrasses that we love to come in, in and out of the rock, in and out of the rock. I wish down. we had that video up. Yeah. Uh, maybe somebody can post it if they know where it is. But, but if you buy those wrasses, guess what? That's their natural habitat. If you don't have that, they're not probably likely not going to be happy. Actually, you found that firsthand. They're yeah. not happy. So actually, Elliot shared that with me. Uh, that the wrasses, he showed me this video and showed where they actually naturally live. And like that hits the that piece here. Uh, that the place or environment or plant or an animal naturally or normally lives and grows. Mm. So like we can force it to live somewhere else or we can make areas where it fits better. Yeah. And so uh, I had the uh, Johnson wrasse and he just lived fine places. He just, I don't know, it just was didn't seem right. And he, t he told me about this idea, show me the video. And it is, it's just like, as far as the eye can see, rubble fields, right? The, yeah. And there's so much life of these, these Coming grasses. Coming in and, and like, out, in and out. I don't out. know, hundreds, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. thousands of shooting in and out. And so I tried to emulate that with something like this, which, that's, you know. That's made on the, by you. Yeah, this, we made that's this one. The, not a piece of a single piece of rock. So it looks like it's just a normal piece of rock for the most part. Once mm -hmm. it's underwater, you can barely tell that it isn't just a piece of rock. But if you pick it up, like we opened Gaps. up the bottom and yeah. it just, it's just a bunch of pieces. It probably took me three minutes to make this. You know, it's just a bunch of rubble chunks. glued together, you know, and there's little holes all over it. And there's holes that you can shoot in from the top, mm. you know, from all over. And so it's actually kind of like one layer. And then I built another layer of more holes in the top. And you know what? It took him 24 hours to move into it because loved it. That was the habitat from where he Feels came right. from. You know, that's a that's a challenge to uh, you know if we do uh, you know species or fish um, type videos or something. It'd be nice to in the description of the fish that you're going to buy have. Here's their natural habitat, what that looks like, and oh, and on top of that, here's how you can, how you would need to recreate that in your tank if you wanted to keep this fish. I gotta tell you, that piece drives me absolutely crazy. That there's no description right? of what they yeah. need. I go to a, uh, the store, or the, I look on the online, and it says like some stupid matrix of, you know, like, Reef safe with caution doesn't give you any yeah. information like compatibilities with other fishes. Some weird matrix that eh. it, none of it says this is their natural environment and how you recreate it. Yeah, like what does caution mean? Does it mean like they eat SPS corals? Does it mean they eat uh, LPS corals? And we all understand, dude, that it, like sometimes you never sometimes, know exactly. Yeah. But like, is this a eighty percent chance they're going to eat coral, or is it a five? Because a lot of people would risk the five and then figure out how to get the fish out of the tank mm -hmm. uh, afterward, especially if you build like these NSAs. Like, getting them out is super easy, man. You just pick the whole thing up and scoop them out. Yeah. Because they're like, I can't, I don't have to rebuild the aquas game. I just lift it right out. Yeah. You know? So mm. I, I'd risk the 5%. <laughs> For sure. You know, in fact, we had a couple pieces break off of uh, the 360 scape. We just lift the whole thing up on a piece of board, man, and uh, it back on. We, we could do the same thing. We would scoop the fish up if we needed to. Yeah. Right? <laughs> So yeah, I, that needs to be. It included. should say in there. This is their habitat. Like How this is where this it? fish would live in the wild. What its habitat looks like, and how you can recreate it 
and make it happier uh, yeah. than the gorilla that mm. lives in a cage. Mm. We know? get that. I mean, we we get that information for some of our pets, especially like if you think about dog breeds. There's a uh, you know, I know that my dog breed, Australian Shepherd, is a high energy type dog, and I know that going into it, needing meaning that. I better be active with the dog, otherwise he's uh, going to damage my property, he's going to be unhappy, uh, he's probably going to be unhealthy to some degree if they don't get exercise. Uh, we're just not going to be happy together. Mm -hmm. So uh, way, way back when, I wanted a Samoyed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the lady told me, no, I won't give you one. I'm like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> and uh, she's like, yeah, you can't have the dog if you don't have a fence, you know? And I'm like, oh, no, I got one of those like electric fences or whatever. Uh. And like, dude, it's like an acre and a half mm -hmm. and it has like a pond or a stream in the back. Dude, this is dog heaven, you know? <laughs> and she's like, nope, unless you got a real fence. And I'm like, you yeah. know, I was annoyed at the time, but like, bravo. You know, oh. like you'd care about the animals that you're breeding and making sure they get to the home. Basically, you said they're going to run right through the fence. It's true. Uh, you know? Yeah, my fiance's family is all grown up with Samoyeds and they had no fence and they've lost a, a puppy to running outside the thing. So, yeah, sadly. Ah, anyway. Okay. What about. Can't escape uh, aggression. Can't, this is the big one. This is the one that I think is probably the, the biggest deal of all. Oh, almost. The, I would argue that it is in the top one to two reasons why fish just disappear or there's just death and you don't necessarily notice it. And that is uh, you can't escape aggression. Like how many times have you, have you gone to your tank? I know I have gone to my tank and I've got chunks out of fish's fins and i'm like i don't see the aggression happening in front of me but i'm also looking at the the tank you know 0.5 percent of the time uh that the they're actually in there throughout a 24-hour period uh i'm not seeing the aggression that's happening and one chasing another and a lot of times it's uh the ones getting picked on can't get away from it yeah they're just getting chased and you mm. see the nip fins and then one day you don't see the fish the at fish all. is gone Fish is gone. Uh, oh, it just disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. No, oh, I know it died. You know, <laughs> and so like you think about like if you think about that in your own tanks or people that you know or just likely to you know you're just your best guess. Mm. Uh, I bet you the aggression piece kills more fish than nutrition problems. I would think so. I would yeah. think so because you now uh, feeding is uh, it, we've gotten away from the that whole idea of I got to pull back feeding to control, you know, nutrients in my tank. So now this day and age, it's almost just feed whatever the heck you want to your filtration. I can, I can adjust for that. Mm -hmm. So feeding is not the problem anymore, but I still, still fish death. So I saw, uh, actually this happened in the 360, which is it at one point there was a whole bunch of antheas and other stuff in there. There just wasn't enough habitat for them. Uh, and so I went and built like, I don't know, I think I put like six of these in there and I put some towers and stuff in there with it too. Boom, solved. Hmm. Yeah, and once everybody had enough homes, solved. And you know what? This all really, like after I, was like, you know, often when we're writing these like scripts, uh, it really kind of allows you, it's like anything like journaling or something. Yeah. And you write it down and you're like, huh, you know, that's how that goes together. Yeah. The clown harem tank. At, at the end, that last final episode, is is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. This is exactly the conversation you're having. It was husbandry, habitat, habitat, nutrition, mm -hmm. uh, all These chemistry, pillars, yeah. all those things. And it was the reason why what was told to us was impossible wasn't, and we did it for four and a half years. Mm -hmm. We took 30 fish that hate each other, right? <laughs> uh, that, Naturally uh, aggressive towards other yeah, species like them. It put them in a 120 gallon tank, which isn't very big to, to escape aggression from. And in this case, the habitat wasn't the rock. It was making sure we had like 60 anemones in there. <laughs> right. Everybody you know had what? their spot. When you got ample food Tons and you got it. ample homes and you got uh, your uh, uh, husbandry is good uh, and your chemistry is good and everything is stable, you know what? A community just gets along. Yep. And they don't kill each other, <laughs> right? Uh, it's when there isn't enough shelter and isn't enough food Fighting or neither of those things are, re uh, yep. are uh, regular. Fighting Fight for, for resources, resources. Yeah. people will kill each other for that stuff. Probably, oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. Nature does that. Mm. But if you solve it, all of a sudden it doesn't. So this is probably the biggest piece of you only heard one thing here today. It was, if you see all those nip fins, it could be just poor husbandry, but it could also be, just be we just didn't think about the habitat for these organisms. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Okay. Uh, so 
this is actually goes into this comfort and stress piece too. And it's like, it's more than not just the nip fins, which is like, I'm actually trying to eat you. Yeah. Uh, it's comfort and stress. And it's that piece of like you were saying, uh, being out in the open wild and you're like, oh my God, where am I going to look? Where am I yeah. going to go? I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. get anything. That's comfort. Yeah. And so I, I read some some of the comments uh, on one of the videos uh, recently, uh, the, the HNSA video. And there was two of them that really kind of stuck out to me. One of them was, thank God, your nobody's creating what he called the NHSA, which is the no habitat space available, <laughs> right? Or something land along right, those right. lines. And, and like, there's nowhere to live, man. Yeah. And like, thank God somebody's speaking up against it. And I was like, huh, well, that's a really interesting <laughs> thing. But I saw another one actually who said that he had, uh, I can't remember what kind of fish it was, but some shy, shy fish. And then the thought process and sometimes in the neg negative space is, if I create overhangs or something, then I can actually see them uh, while they're hiding or whatnot. Right. But it turns out it's not really enough for that fish mm. to be comfortable. And so what this gentleman found was if you created areas that he really was comfortable, he would come out into the open. Mm. And then because he knew that he had shelter to go Some back place to, to, go back to the fish. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like trying to hide in a square room with flat walls. Like, I'm back up, I'm up against the wall, but yeah. I'm not comfortable. I'm still not hidden. I'm not enclosed. Yeah, and the and that's kind of like what those overhangs were, you know, they're flat, smooth surface. But you can press your body up against it. They can press their body up against the rock, but it's still fully exposed. Mm -hmm. That's what I was seeing with when you had all the antheas in there. Mm -hmm. Is that they're like they're trying to find homes, just kind of wedging themselves up into a rock rather than finding an actual like home. Yeah, you know? I, I would would not be able to see a rest that's hiding in here. But yep. when he's comfortable, I'll see him because he He'll knows he has a place to go. It's. I mean, I like. These, some of these things are Light counterintuitive. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know. But like, once you understand it, like, yeah, that's the way I behave too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, so uh, also stress eaters. Mm. You know, I, I get stressed and I actually eat, but people do the opposite. Uh, they don't eat because they're stressed? Yeah, they don't eat because they're stressed <laughs> out, right? And so the stressed out fish, part of nutrition is actually husband or uh, b building the right habitat. habitat. So they're not stressed so that they eat. Comfortable enough to eat. That could be a lot of things. It could be the rats you just talked about, but mm -hmm. it could be things like copper bands. Oh, yeah. Where, like, there's just so there's delicate There's so much eaters. going on, and there's as soon as you feed the tank, everybody else is going crazy. Uh -huh. And that butterfly is like, that, that's not my scene. Mm -hmm. I want to sit down and take my time and pull out the napkin and cut my steak. That's a butterfly co or a copper bill. Like, if you're rushing me, get away. <laughs> I don't know. Like, but yeah. Uh, and then there's another option too here for habitat, which is just straight up fewer fish. Just fewer fish. There, I know. I, you're gonna try that on the 360. Uh, then we have like 10 fish inside of a 600 or 360 gallon tank. Yeah, that uh, I would have. Mm -hmm triple that if it were mine. I, yeah. I just love all of the species of tank. I, I love seeing the swimming. Uh, it's a hard hard just uh, juxtaposition against like my dream tank is a bunch of really gorgeous swimmers and sticks that don't move. Okay. And it, what? it's that yin and yang almost. Yeah, but they do move if you get all the polyps super extended. <laughs> yeah, you know? true. Uh, but like, what would you prefer though? A tank full of fish? Or uh, uh, the if I we oh, pull that, off that Zen Garden yeah. of SPS, I want them both. Yeah, you can have both, and like <laughs> you're gonna see like the, uh, that's the aquascape that's in there, yeah. and I love it, and so I'm gonna work with it and it's actually try to create something new. It's designed for that. But the aquascape that we built in uh, this week's video is actually designed for both. Yeah. And that's probably what I would suggest to most people. Again, we're gonna get to this in just a second here. Uh, all right. All right. So, do you call it habitat? Or do you call it aquascape? What do you call it? I said habiscape and aquatet, but that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for all of you, if you were gonna tell somebody to build this thing, would you tell them to go research habitats? Would you tell them to go research aquascapes? I know like in the past, uh, we would have all called it an aquascape. Yeah. Now the desire is clearly like, oh, let's call it a habitat now. Mm. Uh, but I don't think that's really true. I think it's in between because I'm not just building a habitat for uh, the animals. I'm also trying to make it look beautiful mm. for my living room. So right? if aquascape means beautiful and habitat means best served for the fish, uh, <laughs> we've got the HFA. 
HFA, which is a habitat focused uh, aquascape. Uh, I mean, will it stick? We I, I don't know. We acronym a whole bunch of stuff around this is the, here. This is the final frontier, though. Okay. I feel like all all trajectories have the NSA down. is coming this way. The HNSA is coming this way. Can we land on HFA? Okay. You know what? I'm gonna do my own my own effort on this. We're going to do a straight up how to build a, a HFA. Yeah, a bit video that was like the one that we just released, but like more the nerdy. Step by step, step process. Step, yeah, like yeah, be yeah. an hour long video. Mm. Uh, but I'm going to call it the HFA, oh, yeah. which is Habitat Focused Aquar or Aquascape, meaning it is an aquascape but I'm going to make sure that there is adequate habitat. And I think both coral and fish. I think the end uh, product of what you produced on that last video was that. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. We'll see it in uh, practice, hopefully. Okay, uh, so let's talk about a couple of ways that you would add habitat to a tank. Like Existing. There's obviously the one, that, the video we just released, you could build a network of holes mm -hmm, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what are the ways you could do it outside of a two week built on an aquascape? I think you could uh, add habitat uh, with coral selection, you know, in some way. In that, uh, take clownfish for example. You know, I you can add it in corals, and I think you can add it, of course, in species like you know the uh, like anemones and things like that. Now you have you've built habitat for the fish that thrive in those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, as some LPS hammers or Duncans, or I've seen the clownfish kind of hang out in leathers and things like that. They hang out in those. Uh, once your corals start to grow, you could probably add habitat that way because now, uh, like my Monty, my Monty cap, I'm looking over here, back here at the 160 with the uh, Satosa and the Monty cap and all these different places that are now grown into each other. Guess what? There's a place for a fish to go in there and hide up underneath of it now. One of my top f uh, 10 favorite uh, like behaviors to watch is actually watching chromas live inside of an acro. Oh yeah. Right? And so like my buddy had a big giant acro and then he had 30 chromas and they would all dart inside of it and you could see them all kind of like <laughs> sticking their faces out of it and then they would come out and do the schooling behavior and then they'd shoot back into the thing. Yeah. Uh, and actually, that was one of the things I really had in mind when I was building uh, that uh, habitat scape last week is that can you create, I mean, like, because it'll, it'll take a while to build an acro that big. Can you create something that has, you know, like a 20 different little pockets inside of its own little rock here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, inside of this thing that could help create that same kind of, mm. you know, comfortable atmosphere where this, this fish actually lives in the community and is most comfortable when it's close to uh, the other members of its community. It doesn't want to spread out and live in 20 different little holes. That's not the way it behaves. So can you build an aquascape that actually supports that from the beginning? I think, uh, you know, my initial thought on, and if you were to ask me this question before I've seen you build, you know, these, these little additions here, uh, how can you add habitat? And I was just, well, I just, I just buy some more rock and shove it in there and pile it up on there and try to, you know, do these big giant chunks. But, uh, you know, in an established tank or what have you, when you, you know, if you've already seen this aggression, this little thing right here is unobtrusive to add to my tank. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and a lot of times I want islands on their own anyway, you know, or even if I built this uh, um, twice as big or whatnot, I can find a place for that somewhere in my existing tank. Uh, but I did it with a purpose for habitat like you did. Uh, that's easy to do and probably and easier to do than just if this were a boulder with no negative space inside and out, it would just be boulder, 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 and I'd quickly filled up all that negative space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, what I actually found in some of the builds too is I had made these things and put them on the ground. Uh, and then when I was just looking for some inspiration, Dave and I actually took some of these and then glued them right onto the rock. Oh, yeah. Right? And so there was already like, Instead of trying to build all these little pieces of it, we took these kind of networks and then attached them to the rock. And we're like, wow, there it is. There it Bam, is. Bam, man. <laughs> there's 20 habitat. little holes instantly. <laughs> yeah, so there's totally different ways to do it. I think even with your standard, like, you know, boulderish type, uh, like Fiji rock, mm. it's I can try to, like, make it all mesh together. Or I can stack it just a little bit looser in a way that actually creates more pockets. So it's like not just one way to do the whole thing. 
you can think about how do I add extra rock to what I already have? How can I do it in a way that adds these little pockets? Can I build something like this? Building a big old aquas, uh, big huge aquascape will take some time and skill. This thing took, I, I, I really think it took three minutes. The, the further and further we get down this road of rocks and stuff, the more I think that you know this Marco type rock or this limestone type rock is far superior than the Pukani and the Fiji of, of days couldn't old. Couldn't do it with that. You couldn't well, take. You couldn't that. take. Well, so Pukani, we were. It was so soft Gosh. and brittle that you could drill through it and you could kind of make these it, things. But it broke apart. It broke. Uh, so when if you were trying to like break up Pukani and then glue it all back together, it would look unnatural because Pukani already looks natural from the get. It's stuff that just doesn't fit together the same way. It would always look like, and it had a grain yeah. to it. So unless the grain so you, was going perfect. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think this is becoming the more superior rock in this uh, you know, goal of building habitat. It so. I'll, I'll definitely, I mean, I can now glue probably 150 pieces of rock together and have you not be able to see the seam. It yeah. looks like one fluid piece. Yeah. Far more superior. I uh, like it. Man. Very interesting. I like it a lot. Man. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, in some in terms of, uh, all right, let's get to some of the build stuff here. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to ask you what, what you think. <laughs> we went from what was the NSA. A lot of you, there was 200,000 people actually that watched that yeah, first yeah. NSA, NSA video. I'm curious how many people actually went to build them. If you built an oh, I NSA, think please, wait. I your think hand. there's a lot. I've seen a lot of people talking about I'm doing the NSA or I'm, I'm buying these rocks to do the NSA. Uh, there's a lot of comments and feedback that says they're doing NSA. The cool, the cool piece about the people that did do the NSA, if you ever wanted to change it, to like, an you can H lift NSA? out the whole thing really easy, usually, yeah, right? Yeah. And you could add some little pieces to it with no problem and actually convert it and uh, add habitat. Yeah, and it's not that hard. Uh, but, okay. So when we went, we decided to take the NSA look, which is that open structure and negative space in this case usually means an artistic word. Right. Like, I mean, I can see black or blue or whatever through open spaces. Yeah. And I'm looking at a lot of open space, not just rock. It's made for my eyes. Okay. Do you think that we were able to effectively change the NSA into something that incorporates habitat with that HNSA, or did we fail? No, I think uh, I actually like the look of that HNSA in that it feels like I have uh, more real estate for corals, which is great, um, and you still get that it's. You still get that that look to me of the NSA where uh, there's places going off this way and there's places going off this way and you don't know that these are two structures until you actually get around and you're like, those aren't even touching. Uh, but then you look at it and you're like, there is a ton of holes and pockets and places for them to live. And because uh, we have the, you know, we have the 120 gallon tank with the HNSA in it. And then right around the corner, you go look at the 120 gallon tank with the NSA in it. And you so walk different. back from one to the other and you're like, the NSA is smooth surface. I can see why. And there's no, there not a lot of these intricate networks, holes and caves and caverns. It, uh, it made the aesthetically, it, check the aesthetically please, uh, appealing box, uh, but then you look at it and you're like, okay, where's the fish gonna hide? Huh, there's the same problem. They're gonna be pressed up against the flat wall. But then you look over next door and here's the HNSA, you still get that feel, the flowy, the kind of, there's less negative space, but the feel is still there. The artistic feel is still there, but I can count, there's a fish hole, there's a fish hole, there's a fish hole, there's a Endless. fish hole. Endless, tons of them. Yeah. I like it. All right, I'm gonna show, I. This actually got away from me. If you could pull up in just a second or get ready to show the, the wall <laughs> look we did. Uh, uh. This got away from me and we almost gave up. Uh, I'll be honest. Like I built this thing and we, I just decided that like, I don't know. Like what, we built the NSA and then we built all the habitat into it and like it ate up all the space. Mm. And like all of a sudden it became a wall look and then like, I don't know. I mean, we definitely added an enormous amount of habitat to this, but you lost that. I lost that negative yep. open space. So let's see it here. You can see it's round one. We're before about you we tore were it down. about to give up here, and you can see how much habitat is in this. There's no question, right? 
but it lost some of the negative space look to it. You can see there's still there's some, some of it. There's some negative space there, but yes, when you it's, come off to, when it comes to this letter right, the, right there, that yep. start of it, that just looked like a big, uh, old, big wall. old wall of rock. I, 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 you actually told me you loved it, right? But it didn't hit the, mm -hmm. the negative thing at all. I, I, I actually said in the video before we threw that video in the trash was, I don't think we hit it. I think we hit like habitat for sure, but we lost we lost it. Yeah. And so this is like one of the Aquascape big the big lost. tips that uh, Dave actually always tells me. Ryan, go home. <laughs> we'll look at it with fresh eyes in the morning. And I walked in there and I looked at it with fresh eyes in the morning and I tore a whole bunch of it off. Yeah. Right. And, st and I don't say I want to say I didn't start it over. I, I bet you I tore twenty percent of it out. Yep. Uh, and then I took a totally different direction. Maybe you could throw up what it ended up looking like in the end. So in the end, you can see more open space yeah, here yeah. from almost every single Just angle. Just two big chunks yeah. that look like one solid structure. Now, see, that's the same angle where it looked like a rock wall before, yeah. but I'm, I'm seeing the negative space, the pieces jutting out at me. I wish we had an angle actually come from the other direction because the other direction shows how open that other side actually ended up. Right. And it's kind of hard from this angle to see. Yeah, if you watch the video, it's Cameras see it. and depth is really tough to capture. It, it is. Uh, and so in this section, in this one, it doesn't look as negative as the, if you watch the whole video. But uh, now, do you have the, the, the NSA? Look at this yeah. one, how open this guy really ends up. I, this is uh, an aquascape, okay. not a habitatscape. Yeah, but you know what? I, I still love this one. Oh, too. I'm a big fan. Uh, uh, from an artistic component? This is why I love the 360 aquascape. Is this is what the uh, feels this feels like the 360 aquascape. You achieved what he achieved with Marco Rock. So and like and in this case, I think if you were thinking about habitat for just for acros and this, coral. Oh, this is hundred percent. Yeah. This is a coral aquascape. But you should probably keep or, or habitat. fewer fish in this tank. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. And look at the I mean the smoothness of the rock and the joints. Uh, there is not a place where as a fish, I feel like I'm surrounded by, you know, 80% of uh, coverage. Anywhere I go hide, I'm going to have uh, a spot where somebody can get to me. Yeah, it's it. There's places. There just isn't. Couple, not as there many. There just isn't six dozen. <laughs> yeah, for all the fish. You know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So, uh, all right. So I, I feel like we were able to achieve it. Uh, although it, it ended up being a balance in the end. And I, and I think that that's the message part of it is, is you can design for the coral, right? And it would be a big open space is probably ideal for the coral. You can design only for the fish, which will probably be like that wall look where it has just like 8 million holes in it, right? <laughs> or you can find a balance in the middle, yeah. which uh, I think will actually be most people, but I, I don't know. I'd be, I, I'm, this is another one where I'm going to have to watch the comments because I don't know. All right. So uh, from uh, a habitat tips before we get together talking about uh, actually how you do some of this stuff, mm. uh, think about what you're going to keep. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just the fish, it's the corals too. You got many habitats that you could do. You can actually stack. Stack multiples of those, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this way I build them, by the way, is I'll build them as low as I possibly can. And then I'll build another one on top because then it creates a network of holes. Mm. So just kind of build it forward, just build it up, you know, and keep layering on the stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, another habitat piece is like the shelves that you see are not actually shelves that we build because it's really hard to get. I mean, the jutting out pieces? Yeah, when you see these juts that kind of like hang out yeah. and they're big shelves, you know, often you're like go looking for big flat round pieces well yes. they don't really exist so if you could grab me a couple of those pieces over there oh, yeah. uh, the big ones or the small ones up there oh, those guys, that guy. uh no those little little bitty guys ah, there you uh, go a couple more so one of the things here is like this just looks kind of like a boulder however <laughs> when you piece them together all of a sudden they become a shelf right and so this is actually how we create the shelves, yeah. uh, is we take two pieces that otherwise don't look like a shelf, and then we wedge them together shelf. to create one that is now a shelf. And you can keep kind of building it out as such until, you know what, this stuff all fits together like Lincoln Logs and is now a total shelf. 
The one thing that I will give a tip as is this doesn't look natural. It's too flat. Mm -hmm. And so usually we look for ways to A, angle it. You know, don't, if you got two shelves, like don't make them run at the exact same angle. Yeah. Offset, uh, <laughs> overlap. And let me see if I can reassemble this a, a little bit. Okay, so I got a shelf again here and that I glued together and is now flat. And like you can see how you can barely even see it. You just put some glue in it, all of a sudden it becomes a shelf. But it's too flat for me. So what if I kind of bend, the bend one of them one down, down or, or you know, give it just a little bit of an angle somehow? All of a sudden, you know, it doesn't look as shelfy, and it's hard for me to show you here, but like try to don't make it like a pancake. Yeah. Have it kind of curve around or around. Uh, well, up and down. you'll see a lot in that HNSA, you'll build your shelf like that, and it's things like here's your shelf, and all of a sudden, pff, this thing comes straight down off of it like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just adds this. That's part of that NSA where it just adds this uh, really cool depth to it. Uh, and it, like you said, there's not shelf on shelf on shelf on shelf like this. And if, if you're looking at it saying this looks kind of unnatural or something's wrong with it. Bend one down. Bend a little bit of it down. Shoot it off. Shoot one Don't off shoot it straight, day, straight yeah. super flat. Have it go up or a little bit down. It, turns, it makes it so cool. Just get rid of the parallel lines where everything's running the exact. Mm. It's cool that things follow each other, but they should but then one take goes off, off this in way. something different yeah. a little bit. So cool. So uh, there you go. But one of the things that I, I found through this and it was through your help, was different methods <laughs> of gluing at this time. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, super, we, uh, the first time we, you built your NSA was that, that was basically the, uh, what we call the hybrid method, right? You'll take some super glue, you'll take some Instaset so it holds together, and then you come back around with some mortar, you mortar on top of that, and then you hide that joint with a little bit of sand and a little bit of super glue to make it look like, uh, you know, the rock is seamless. And uh, you know, I did a twenty some a bunch of testing on twenty four hour stuff, and and uh, find that uh, okay. So out of just glue only, and out of uh, that more or that mortar only, or out of hybrid and stuff like that, uh, some of these joints hold together a little better than others. And in is especially uh, particularly important when we're talking about building uh, an aquascape or a habitat where, like you said, if I need to remove something or remove a fish. I can take the whole dang thing out, or at least a big giant chunk of it out in one in one shot. Get my fish and put it back together. If they, you know, you ever you hear people say like, oh, if you put a six line in and you ever want him out, he's done for. It doesn't have to be that way. Maybe if you have unconnected rocks and stuff, uh, but that's when that bond. I mean, that's what really the perm point of testing the bonds and whatnot is because uh, you know I'm going to need to, or I'm, I want the option to pull this thing out or do something with it where I don't have to, you know, all of a sudden my whole thing tips over and rolls. The nature of these two is they, they support a lot of weight because mm -hmm. most of the time you're not building like this big volcano. Uh, you know, it's yeah. actually a, one branch that overhangs way over there yeah, and over here. Yeah. And like, it's got one connection point and it really needs to be solved because you don't want this thing to fall mm -hmm. over someday. All right, and so there's, you know, different things that hold, or different approaches that hold uh, better than others. Uh, I did a 24 hour test, uh, you know, where you, pick it up and pick it up and then drop it from a foot and there's definitely some that uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, putting in your tank 24 hours uh, or right after 24 hours of gluing uh, and and the surprise ending was the the how fast the epoxy uh, actually healed so when I finished that test you were in the middle of uh, revamping the second uh, HNSA portion uh, the, the second the final what, what it was and started using epoxy in there and in that video, I said, uh, you know, personally, it was uh, a, a personal reason for me why I, wouldn't, why I wouldn't use epoxy is the smoothness of how it goes, which led us down to, okay, what's a tip for uh, how, if, how to use this, get the strength of the epoxy, but not have that smooth, my fingerprints, my thumbprints still in it, and I can see it for years to come. Push a piece of rock in it. <laughs> get a piece of rock and yeah, push so it in. I don't know if we have any rubble here, but all we did is like we would smush all the epoxy in and then it would. It would be really like a big ugly seam Smooth that looks like your gob, thumb. yeah. If I just took a piece of rock and smushed it in there, not mm. only would it smush it in deeper, but it actually would get G the shape of the rock that I smushed More in natural, there. More natural, yeah. And it becomes seamless after we, you know, covered it in sand. So like, yeah. 
I will say there's a couple more details along the way. So let's just talk about each one of them, which is the first one is the gel glue, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I, I will say I was wrong about one piece. Uh, well, I learned about super glue gel and doing gobs of it. Uh, I, we did it on, on uh, super glue gel only and super glue gel and Instaset. And the way cyanoacrylate dries, or its curing method, is by you know taking moisture from its environment, and that hardens that cyanoacrylate. Well, think about if I put a big giant gob of glue on a joint that's fully surrounded, how is the inside of that joint uh, getting hardened and cured? Uh, after 24 hours, it's still tacky and wet on the inside. It's gooey. Even worse than when you use the Instaset because the Instaset chemically hardens the outside immediately, sealing in uh, no moisture, or sealing it in so less moisture can get into the center of it. Yeah, so the Instaset is like invaluable to this whole process because it allows you to take, mm. I mean, you could take some really monster rocks and stack them on top of each other and have one jet out here, put a little bit of glue on it, Instaset it, and it holds. It's like amazing. You'd be really surprised how well it holds, but it's still kind of gooey on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, and like when I originally did this, I thought more glue, more better, right? Right, right, right. Uh, and I was wrong. And so after watching what you were doing, I'm like, you know what? I think actually what works better is if I put a really thin layer of that gel, come with uh, these little guys, uh, like a little coffee stir stick and then kind of smear it around so it looks nice first off, get it into the holes, and then spray it so it's thin. Yep. And when it's thin, it will cure all the way through immediately. Yep. Yep. And then put another layer on the outside yeah. if I want. If I want thickness, gobs of it is not the right answer. Mm. Uh, Layers, yeah. And this time, I didn't spray the Instaset on the rock, and that's something we should explore a little bit yeah. more, because. Sometimes I've sprayed the Instaset right on the rock so that when I put the glue in, it immediately actually sticks to the glue mm -hmm, too because mm -hmm. the accelerator will only work on the areas that it sprays on for the most yeah. part. But yeah, I, I found that the, using the thick glue gel, thin layers with the Instaset, and then if I need it to be stronger, and I'm ultimately gonna make it stronger with uh, epoxy or cement, mm -hmm. but just to hold the weight while I'm working on it, do another thin, layer. Thin layer, yeah. Yeah, it's like a three-layer cake. And I test that in, this, in the next test of seven-day uh, curing, uh, three-layer cake. It turned, out really, it turned out really well. Okay, so <laughs> next point. I'm in there and I'm working with the cement. And uh, oh, we tried the, the, day, the cement is actually the hardest part of the whole thing. Yeah. Because you're going to get it all over the place. It mm -hmm. often ends up looking like this. And it's dripping all over the damn place. <laughs> Everybody's getting it on their shirts and everything. And whoops. Boy. And it it is just kind of messy, man. Mm. And it and it's actually you know, you're trying to get this like peanut butter tack to it, but it, like just a little bit of water changes it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And then like it's fine if you're pushing it on a like a flat surface, but what if I need to get it up in like a vertical surface I need more tacky, or you yeah. know, mm -hmm. yeah, like underneath something or on something straight up and down. It's it's actually really hard, yeah. and it just like gets all over the place, and you're gonna have to come fix that later. Okay, then I watched your video on the epoxy winning the strength test, and I was floored because I hated epoxy. That point. <laughs> no, me too. I said that in the video that between you and me and uh, Brent, that this was uh, epoxy was our least favored to win the strength test. Uh, because we've all had negative experiences with it, but we all used it wet and underwater. Boom. Yeah, but if you use it, uh, you know, push it in, let it cure, dry on dry rock, man, does that stuff hold. And the, but like you said, it's hard to get mortar uh, underneath the surface, epoxy, that, that squish, yeah. done. It's like gum. Dude, cement. Dead to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know oh, you man. heard it here first. I'll never use it again. I shouldn't say never. Maybe there's some use for it. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll share this though. The cement is way cheaper. I use mm. 22 sticks of, of epoxy. epoxy. Yeah. yeah. So you're probably into it for 100 bucks of epoxy. Uh, yeah. So it is way, way, way cheaper to use the cement stuff. Probably 20 bucks for mm -hmm. one one tub. So mm -hmm. know that. But 
from a functioning standpoint of producing what I want to produce mm. and make it look nice and attractive and skip all of the mess and not get all this garbage all over the place and not have to keep mixing it and uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's crazy. <laughs> the epoxy, you know, you just smush it up and then what I was doing is I'd roll it into uh, like a little tube, like a pencil, and then I could squish it up into the holes or I could wrap it wrap around, around the, the whole joint. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And like it was so, so easy to get it on, you know, underhanging surfaces. So like when I had those shelves and I needed to support them, I could smoosh it up underneath where you weren't even going to see it. So I don't even have to come back and make it look nice either. It's mm -hmm. probably also the point at which it's the most supportive instead of trying to hold it together from the from top. From the top, yeah. You know, on the bottom, it's actually wedging mm -hmm. itself together. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the epoxy, man, was the solution, and, I, and I'll reiterate, underwater, I Never had hate a epoxy. 100%. It doesn't stick to anything that I want it to. Yep. Sometimes you can Flakes push it into a hole sometime. or something. Depending on the epoxy, I've had the skimmers going crazy. I pulled a rock out and tried to get another rock, and I pushed a bunch of epoxy in there, and I was like, okay, this says cures underwater and all this. Put it back down, and then days later, flakes of it, flake, flake, and <sighs> feeling my my. By the end, uh, there was no epoxy left over. Okay, with one exception, that dental epoxy from Tunes. Oh, right? the coral the stuff, gum. The coral gum. You can push it. Put a little. I put a little glue on the outside of it. Uh, I uh, smush it into the hole, put some glue on the coral, and smush it into the epoxy. Works great. It is a great way to attach coral. I can come back later, uh, even a long time later, and pop that stuff But that off. dental epoxy doesn't make the skimmer go nuts. It hardens right. within uh, about 120 seconds or into whatever area you want. It's pliable, so you can actually get it off of the surface if you really wanted to, using a little pick or something. Definitely the underwater choice. Underwater, no question. That and some glue together. But like the two-part epoxy that you smush together that is like all flaky? Dry. Never, man. Use never it dry. Use. But dry, holy cow, better <sighs> dry. Like to the point I'll never, ever, ever <laughs> go back. Uh, so cement to me, too wet, too messy. There was a, it, it's, yeah, out of the comments uh, came in of the, my video of the aqua Sakes came the, uh, the sand and glue technique, really thin sand, uh, really thin glue with layers of sand. And we got a chunk of it back here. Uh, I actually found that uh, this actually works really well in that uh, initial strength bond building. Uh, you can see like there's chunks of, uh, Dave's gonna adjust the camera for you guys. You can see the sand here. Yeah. Uh, kind of uh, see it anyway. So <laughs> what you do uh, is um, take the, you know, a bunch of sand and heap it into the joint and then you get really thin water-like glue and you squirt it in there. Well, the good thing about water-like glue is that it's not like gel. It's, uh, it's you know, it's kind of uh, spreading itself out. It's pouring and as it's exposing itself to more surface area, it dries like that. So I would throw some sand on and hit it with some glue and then within seconds, ready to throw some sand on and hit it with some glue. Uh, ran into a couple issues with it in uh, super strong initially. Like I would consider this if I wanted something. And I think I watched uh, we watched Than's uh, Tidal Gardens video on him do, building an aquas or him and his crew building an aquascape. And they had it. They had pieces that were flat and heavy, like this, being supported on one end by this method by multiple layers of this. Uh, and also, you know. They were at a point when they were building an aquascape where it was still small enough where I could turn the thing over and get into joints that are deep in here so I get 360 coverage. That was my only issue with this one is unlike the epoxy where I can squeeze it into those places that are hard to get to, uh, I couldn't reach some of those places just by it sitting on the thing and trying to throw sand in there and then hit it with glue. It was just difficult. And then you end up with so many layers that it kind of does have an end up with an unnatural look to it, a mound look. So I've never done this method. Uh, I've done it to hide the glue, but mm -hmm. I've never done it as a structural bond before. And again, you're essentially mixing layers of liquid water-like glue with sand, sand and it dries yeah, super duper fast and you just add another layer until you built up the structure you want. There's a couple of reasons that I, I never did it and I was excited to see you do it. Mm. Is one is like it's too much effort. I, I just would rather do some gel and spray and there be done. Were, there was a lot of effort. Right? Like yeah. For every joint. The other one is I know how hard it is to even get the gel sometimes into the areas underneath that I want. Water I mean, trying to like throw water like glue up there and like throw sand up at it. Mm. Like, 
Uh, yeah. this. Oh, and then when, when your Aquascapes gets to, uh, we're talking like you made an HNSA for a 120 gallon you know, tank in two pieces. By the time you get to the top of that first large piece, and you needed to do this sand glue method on the top, and you, there was a joint that you were trying to get, you've lost the ability to pick the whole thing up and turn it over to get underneath that joint. It's just not going to happen. Right? It's hard. Who's right? going to hold you? The other piece here, and I'm going to give this, this is a, be a double tip. The other piece of this one is you can see everywhere where the joint is on this because you can see the sand. It's the different. sand has a totally different texture than the rock. Mm. And everywhere that gets coralline algae will eventually grow over it and it'll be just fine. But anywhere that doesn't get light won't get the coralline algae. You just have to wait for gunk to get yeah. over it, I guess, at some point in time. And it's not like an eyesore, but you can do better, it so worked. why not? It holds stuff together, but I like, I like what you're saying. Uh, build the aquascape knowing that you're going to come back and cover joints uh, rather than trying to do both at, uh, uh, at, the, the, same time? at the same time. Yeah, because yeah, the, the super glue and the epoxy allows you, and especially if you make that a regular texture with a little piece of rubble, mm -hmm. it allows you to create a, like a seamless seam that once you throw, uh, throw some other glue and some sand on it, it works really good. And this is the part that I'll, I'll share I found in this one too, is in the last ones we said use the oolite sand, right? Ah, yeah, really thin. Yeah, it's really small sand because this is like, this looks that like is, that's, grade. that's like special grade sand. Yeah. So it, it's, Big chunks. Oh, well, too big a chunks for what we were trying to achieve here. Yeah, but for I can say, I've yeah. seen it, I can see the texture even with the oolite sand. Mm -hmm. This time, what uh, Dave did is scooped up all the powder off the ground after I had been smashing it, and it works so much oh. better. Yeah, a bowl of this <clears> right here. So this super fine powder, nods, you can even see it just kind of smoking here, but yeah, uh, that's just ground up rock. This is just from, Breaking it up with the hammer, it just kind of creates this dusty fine. So there are a couple of things that this does. Uh, one is it inherently has the exact same color as the rock that it came they from. You just smashed right? it, yeah. Another piece is often the dry rock that uh, you, or the dry sand you get, is still moist. Uh, mm. And so when it's moist, what happens is it changes a little bit of color. It's darker. And then when you put the super glue on it, it essentially encapsulates all the water in there and changes its color, and it's not the same. Yeah. You know, it just, mm. uh, it's, so it's not the same color. So with this stuff, with the powder, all we did is take these syringes here. So these were like from F. Aptasia, right? Oh yeah, uh, that one's uh, still loaded. Yeah, it was still loaded <laughs> here, uh, don't spray. <laughs> uh, and so, what was cool about this, this is the general bonding glue, Yeah, by the so way. there's a difference between, uh, it says it on the label, there's extra thick and then the general bonding, which is basically like super glue water. I wish they would have just called it water like glue. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's like water, and so what's cool about it is like the gel you have to get onto stuff and it kind of get mm -hmm. around. This wicks, so when you put it onto a surface in the rock, it just soaks up into everything and then I just Hit throw it with it, the dust on powder, it. Powder, yeah, salt bay it. And then two seconds later, I mean, I'm not, I mean, you could do it literally the moment that you, after you throw it, hit, come hit by, it with that. spray it right off, and then throw a little bit more glue on it, one, two coats, and you're done. And you can do it all in seconds, and you can actually go by and uh, do the whole thing, like do, you know, 10 or six you know, or more spots all at once, blow and the then come blow up. it off. Yeah, and so what took, the, on the NSA, it took me forever to cover up all the cement. Mm. The cement was just a really dark color versus, where is that epoxy? Uh, oh, it must be a, up there. Yeah, there's I a had it. of it around here. Uh, side maybe? I don't know. It was up there. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, anyway, so it's we had the, oh, there it is. This was the one that I used. I think you could use little two little fishes. But I, I used the two little fishes for my testing. Yeah. Oh, but, you did? Uh -huh. Okay, so this coral crete is the one that I used for uh, building the scape. And the gray color was super easy to cover up mm. with this stuff. Again, like two coats. However, when I had to do it with the uh, sand and with the uh, covering up the cement, it took way more coats. And that sandy texture, I could just see you it. Could see it. Yeah. You go back and look at the NSA, and you're. I think the joint hiding that we did that you did in the HNSA versus the NSA, night and day. Flawless. Uh, oh yeah, it looks and, just like. And, you, yeah, you know, pure one single piece of rock. Uh, HN or the NSA, I can still see the joints. It took me a, a fraction of the time too. 
Like we were, it was so easy to go through and just yeah. remove it all. And by the way, when you run out of this stuff, uh, bang up some more rock. Just bang up some more rock. Oh, that's where that strainer right here came in handy because you could uh, take that strainer and uh, you know, throw all your chunks and bits in there, and then shake out the strainer, and uh, you know, you've sifted out the dust. So with this strainer, uh, just sift it all out because you you don't want the big pieces. The big pieces will be the pieces that you can see. Mm -hmm. If you use only this fine little dusty stuff, it just covers it flawlessly, mm. and it is the best. So use a hammer; it's a little bit of work to crush it. Mm. And one of the things I'll suggest is that I just keep crushing the rock over and over again. Like in the bottom of the strainer, there'll be little bits like this. Uh, crush that up yeah. with the hammer and you'll be able to create more and more of this kind of dusty uh, stuff. Oh, and save yourself some money if you have an air compressor. Use that uh, set of hundreds of cans of this air You know duster. what? We only used probably three cans oh, of really? that. So well, like, that's well, not bad. one pack that's uh, not bad of it. Uh, it, was, it was pretty easy. Uh, you know, another thing that I will share, and I'm, I'm not like a real safety nut, sadly, but you should. I... I had a, some of this, that liquid, the water glue, mm. uh, like spray off of something. When the, the, it was the syringe got kind of stuck and I was kind of working it. And I, it hit my eye right here, okay? Just it was, about I don't know what super glue feels like if it got in your eye, but I, I imagine want, not good. I would uh, want to experience that. <laughs> especially that water stuff heats up, Yeah. right? Uh, it gets hot pretty fast when, oh, it's, burnt, when, it's, when it's doing that. So, yeah. Yeah, glasses, man. That's actually another point of safety, too, of, that I would think of is when I was building, the, when I was using the liquid glue for my Aquascape, uh, well-ventilated area. Holy I crap, did I burn my eyes just by squirting tons of that glue. Yep. And then every once in a while, you'll see it start smoking. And Specifically like, that water-like glue. Yeah, like, oof. Okay, and a whole box of gloves, by the way. Uh, like, this sounds like the boring part of this. We're gonna move on to the other stuff, but like, with the gloves on, uh, a couple of different things. You'll never get all that glue all over your hands. Socks. Right? <laughs> also, this stuff is like kind of like abrasive and it and it soaks all the oils out of your hands and it and like you, you just get scraping. like little cuts and yep. stuff on it. Yep. If you wear the gloves, you don't have any of that problem. So you can get all the glue in there. Also, the epoxy has the same thing when you're when you've mixed up eight million or twenty two sticks of epoxy, it's garbage all over. Just get some glue. <laughs> yeah. All right. So okay. another one here was oh, a spoon for the sand. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you could uh, you can even like as you're spooning hit it with the glue. Okay, this is a structural one. Though. We're gonna tip right here. All right, so we talk a lot about these foundation pieces. So uh, this is a this is what I would call a must. Like not there's sometimes I just say like oh it would be nice if you did X or not. These foundation pieces that are machined on the bottom flat, for an NSA, this is so critical. You don't have a, like a little boulder that's all rolly all over the bottom. Mm -hmm. You have a nice flat surface, and then you come out of it. And I, I will say, in the beginning, I really wanted to do big, huge ones that supported a lot of weight. And what ultimately I found is I liked using more medium and small ones and then gluing them together. So kind of like snake them out a little bit. Oh yeah. Uh, and then I would epoxy or glue them together. And this is a good one where like once you build the foundation, stop and put some of that epoxy in because mm. it's going to carry all the weight. That know? was uh, <laughs> Than and his crew's approach too. And when they were building out the Aquascape, uh, that video that I watched, their base was giant, mm -hmm. but they started with, you know, they've just put flat pieces together and flat pieces together and flat pieces together, and now they've just got one single nice flat base. Then they built up off of that. Yeah, I, I think I, I would agree with that. And one of the pieces that I will say is a foundation of the negative space too, is that you don't just start piling rock on top. Yeah, that one I just, that one you just pulled out here with the epoxy. Yep. Don't don't do that. So it's got a flat bottom, right? And then naturally, that, I just want to set a rock on it. Set a rock on top of it. Okay. Well, the goal is is not that. The goal is really to get some height out of it and start creating that negative space right away. Mm -hmm. So like right here, now Just, I have yep. some negative space in here that's also can be turned into habitat. And so the other goal is too, and I'm, Dave and I did this in our very first one, which is, 
all right, what we want is height. Height is the hardest thing to achieve. And so we built pillars that went straight up. Okay, so natural. the pillar that goes straight up. Unnatural. It's so unnatural, it looks like this weird wonky tree, right? <laughs> uh, and you can already see how this would look weird and wonky eventually. And you could get little arms coming out of it, but it just looks like garbage. So, however, if you start creating it at an angle, all of a sudden you can create it so that it's starting to go up, but it, it doesn't look as hideous. And mm. it's hard to do on camera uh, live, but like if you can start doing it at an angle off of a piece, now I'm gonna create that kind of impossible look that will start to go out this direction. It can go out the other directions. And I'm not looking to just pile, pile rock in the foundation because you'll, it will just look like big blobs of boulders on the bottom yeah. in the end. So yeah. uh, you can, this is a good place to start to try to create your you know, cave network and stuff by wedging them together as well. But avoid this. You know? <laughs> this just doesn't work. Straight up and down or straight on top of each other. Yeah. So again, we're going to do a, a full how-to so you can watch like the actual process in, in real time. It'll probably take an hour or two uh, long <laughs> video. But like, this is one of those pieces, and, I, uh, and we talked about this earlier yeah, today. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the pieces of Aquascapes is actually about the time. time yeah. Right? Yeah. So this project, the first one that I ever did, I've only done three of these, by the way. So uh, uh, the first one I ever did, we probably don't have a video of, but we can show the oh, second one. Yeah, the uh, garage, or your garage one. So the second one we did right here, yep. Uh, yeah. This took, two this is the first weeks? one we did at scale. Yeah, it took two weeks. The 120 gallon tank scape. Yeah, so it took, you know, probably, I mean, it's two weeks, but I'm also here, so it wasn't every last hour that we were here. But right. I think that you should expect this to take at least a couple weekends to totally finish. Like one weekend probably to get the general structure together. Well, if you've never done it before, there's practice and trial and error that you're kind of, you know, figuring out along the way. Even though you give a tutorial on how to do it, like there's a learning curve on your own also. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, especially getting into this colder season. See the, the next one. Uh, getting into the colder season, what do you, what, why not go spend time in your garage building this really cool aquascape? So this one also took two weeks, but I was actually much busier here. So I, it wasn't uh, as much time. I would say that we would have actually got this done in one week mm. if, if I spent all of my time on it. Uh, and so some people are out there saying, oh my God, man, it took two, two weeks. Two weeks, I would never ever spend uh, Aquascape for two weeks? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of okay. in that camp so, myself. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we're on totally different sides of this. You share uh, your opinion. I just, uh, I, like, so my, my aquascape uh, that I have in my 60 gallon and other aquascapes I, I've built, you know, I felt like they looked good to me for my mm -hmm. eye. My goal was to start getting into the fish and the corals, you know, right away. Uh, I can have patience watching my stick make little gains. And when I look at, like, in my tank right now, I've got a, this green slimer that, you know, they grow like weeds. And I'm, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, uh, I see the excitement in the white nubs on each end or a whole new branch coming out. Like, a patience game can be stronger there. I just want to get there right away. So the aquascape, uh, for me, I, I don't see myself spending two weeks on something like that. But that, you know, that's just me. I think you're probably in the majority, right? <laughs> Uh, I will tell you, I wouldn't do it any other way now, though, mm. right? I, I, because if for me, it's not a race to the finish line. Uh, and more so, I'd rather spend two weeks now making it look awesome so I can enjoy it for the next five, ten years or whatever yeah. we use it uh, for. And every time I look at it, say, ah, I made that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there is uh, some sense of pride behind that. Two weeks now will pay off in dividends forever. Mm. Right? And especially, it's worth the effort. Especially in, the, in the, the realm of today's conversation of habitat. You know, oh, the fish too, I mean, yeah. You, it, it's time well served because you're now purposely thinking about your fish down the road. It's absolutely uh, true. I, in my in my case, I'm a hundred percent thinking about myself. Uh, I'm not thinking about the fish. Fast. I'm actually building. You know, in a way, I'm thinking about the. Uh, it's that difference between habitat for fish and habitat for coral. Uh, my priorities lie in habitat for coral. The uh, the fish aren't aren't why I'm here. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I think 
what you're probably going to see here for me as a division is uh, uh, eventually when I move here, I'll probably install a fish only tank at my house, mm -hmm. right? And I'll probably then design something that is purely for the fish and not have any corals in it. In this case, I'll be able to have different mm -hmm. fish than I've ever had before because I don't have to worry about ah, them eating the corals, interesting. right? Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm going to try to build that beautiful aquascape here. For the corals. Uh, yeah, the bonsai thing. God yeah. knows I'll be able to do it. Be on both ends. Uh, you know, uh, one, I can share from fish with my family and it's really cool and I'll build an aquascape deck that way. Here, totally different, totally different goals and I have more time to do it here. <laughs> uh, it turns out you guys pay me to do it. Uh, but more than that, even, like, like, I enjoy it, man. I, I feel like sometimes I am... Oh, building the rocks? Like, I feel like a fairly creative person, but artistically broken. <laughs> right? Like, I, you couldn't get me to draw anything other than a poorly drawn stick figure. No, I'm in the same boat. I, I, I just, I don't have that skill. Yeah. Okay, this one, though, like, I guess sculpting out of rock yeah. is, like, something I feel like I'm decent at. At my third one. Imagine if I made 30 where I'd be at. Oh, know? yeah, 100%. I love it to the point that me and Dave joke like, dude, if they can me, I'm going to go do this for a living. <laughs> I can do this every day. Sell aquascapes pre made. Like, yeah, like mm -hmm. anybody decides Ryan's no longer of any value to BRS TV, yeah. I'm going to go make aquascapes for a living, right? <laughs> uh, because, like, I don't know. I just thought it was, I just really enjoy it. So, like, it's not that. Like when you say like, oh, you would have to go wait two weeks. Uh, I'd say get to. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. I like it. That is like the creation process is mm -hmm. so exciting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I've just got so much other stuff to do that I sit in there for two weeks trying to work on. Well, I can't even do that with projects in my own house. You, you know, <laughs> uh, one of the things here that was like the probably super duper cool is that, and for, but, but by the way, we're gonna point you to the, the NSA video, HNSA HSA, video, if you, yeah. if you haven't seen Homeless. it already, make sure, check it out. But one of the things that really, really, we've got a bunch of questions to answer here too, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, is the one thing that I enjoyed the most that, we, that you and I just realized is we moved the tank from my house 100%. to my office, yep. and there was three pieces of rock the three pieces of rock went right into the horse trough, and then when it came out of the horse trough, they went right in the tank, and it looks the exact same as it did at home. A hundred percent. That yeah. yeah. I mean, we were so so much so that you we had the video of the original rock in your house when you first got it in the tank, and we we're like, okay, we need to make it look like, and it was, hey, adjust that a little bit, adjust that one a little bit, bring this one forward, do a little turn. We nailed it. Looks exactly the way it was. Mm -hmm. There's no, there was continuity the whole way. And that piece about fish, you can debate whether or not a regal angel or flame angel or all that stuff's gonna eat coral or not. In this case, if it did, like it could take 45 minutes, lift the three, the rock out onto a board, mm -hmm. go catch the fish, remove it, put it back in. I mean, even after it's all bonsai and grown out, you you still have the ability to pull you that thing out. Still lift it out, even with all the coral yep, on it. And in fact, I think you could even move the tank with the coral in like that's if, one that is very is the com one of the most common questions about moving a tank is like how do i what do i like i've got all these corals glued on this little rock over here and then this little uh, you talk about like uh, stability for the for the corals and stuff too if i ever had to move this tank i've got all my corals in there they're very used to a, they're used to a very stable you know this is the flow that i get and this is the light that i get and i've been here my entire life uh how disrupting is it if you can't put that back together when you go move your tank super sad yeah yeah <laughs> i like okay and so and when i was thinking about like if we we're going to keep it as the lps tank uh I was like, you know what? I think we could just pick this rock out, put it into the truck, and we could give somebody a little spray mister <laughs> gun and As we go. <laughs> spray them. I'm only 10, 15 minutes from here. Yeah. But I also think that you could get the horse trough, fill it with the water, drop the, we, even with the corals around it, right into the horse trough, mm. saran wrap the top shut, and drive it to wherever the hell you need to drive yeah. it. Uh, and so, like, if you just, like, one of the things that we wanted to do is like consider moving the WWC tank out of uh, mm. the tank that it's in because oh yeah the 750 yeah the 750 this tank's pretty old and at the time like five years ago Red Sea is the first version of that and the front pane isn't glued as well mm. as everybody would like and like one in ten at the time were popping yeah uh, 
Uh, I'm, I'm making that number up. I don't know how much <laughs> it was, but uh, it's a concern. Like, could we move it into a new tank? But These, like, no. This aquascape was not built to move. It was. No, we we would built to stay. Set that tank back so far. Yeah. If we thought, if we, because you'd have to pull the whole thing apart. Pieces would have to, shells would have to come out, and then you'd have to rearrange the shelves. You would never get it right the same way, and it's a major destabilizing event. Okay, so even though, this is a good point, actually, because that, that, shell, that scape is 100% uh, Marco shelf, mm -hmm. right? It's just shelf pieces that are layered. We've seen it. It looks really cool. If we had taken the time, and actually uh, Joe wanted, and I just didn't understand at the time, yeah. to use the mortar to hold it all together, but then we could move. we could take that whole thing out as one piece, drop it into a trough, move a new tank in, drop it back in, never skip a beat. Mm. So like the stacking thing for me, done, dead to me. I will never stack another tank because Join your I rocks. want this ability. And even if I never use it, I want to know that I could get a fish out without disrupting the whole thing. I could move the tank from my office to my kid's room to another home without skipping a beat. Having the aquascape as either one, like one piece or multiple movable Large pieces. Chunks. And pieces like that are not so big that you can't move them on your own. Right. Mm. Or, or with your buddy. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, questions. Uh, we got a couple here. Uh, oh, I like this one from Curl Kitty. Uh, should we change scapes every so often to prevent boredom, or if it's done well, should it stay the same? You know, that's interesting because, like, I was talking about the lions or, or the tigers before. Every once in a while, they introduce new toys. Yeah. Right. So it might not be that you want to change the whole scape out, but like little pieces like this, uh, if like nobody lives in it. <laughs> add a little, yeah, take one of these and just uh, add one in over here. Uh, or, you know, you could add one that like isn't necessarily something that uh, uh, like you would live in, but you might hang around. So I made some of the ones that were for the yellow antheas that were like towers, mm -hmm. right? And so they might want to live around it. Uh, and Or that's an interesting piece. I don't know if that's I don't like know if necessary. I shake up the whole thing, but... You know, the corals might actually do that. Mm. So if you have a coral in there, the coral's kind of evolving the scape for you over time yeah. and adding new interesting flavors. Ah, that's true, 100%. Yeah. Uh, oh, five bucks from Imprez. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, hey, you. Uh, Brymax says, constant aggression causes stress, which makes the fish more susceptible to illness. Absolutely. Yep, that's yeah, what we're like trying to prevent. Straight up death or illness. And in this case, when one gets sick, it could kill all of them. Mm. Yeah, it just uh, it becomes like a breeding ground that just spreads them. <laughs> uh, Willis, has anyone experimented with Gorilla Glue type stuff or any ideas on 100% silicone? I have. Mm. I would never use like just Gorilla Glue. Just straight cyan or acrylate. You know, this stuff is so this stuff is so cheap in some of these big giant bottles. Uh, they, uh, it's been tried and true and trusted for ever in aquariums. I and don't the, know if the, I'd use... The Gorilla Glue would have a similar... Th like, there's no reason to use anything other than that type of glue if you're just going to use, like, glue glue. Yeah. But if you're trying to replace, replace the epoxy, this actually brings up another good uh, element. Oh. Okay, so you can buy this, that two-part epoxy plumbers at, like, Home Depot. Plumber's epoxy. Uh, yeah. yeah. In the plumbing aisle. Yeah. yeah. And you can just buy it from there and switch it together. And so, like, and it's cheaper than the one that has a fish picture on the front of it. Yeah. The answer is, uh, like, is that one a reef safe? I will tell you, I have used it on a reef tank uh, with what I didn't think harmed anything. Mm -hmm. I have never used 22 sticks of it uh, mm -hmm. in an environment like that. So, I don't know. There's Sometimes the the picture of the fish it just is enough for me because uh, it's like I don't want that unknown. You know, eh. I want I, I like the fact that somebody has used this and gone ahead before me in a way that uh, you know I can trust it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say it. like as a member of which was really heavily the DIY, DIY? community. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like I love that stuff, man. Building the MJ mods, you know, building our own fish food. How can I do all it cheap? It. How can I build okay. it myself? Sometimes, man, we take the cheapness in the wrong direction, hmm. right? So, uh, like, uh, the silicone's a good example. So, the silicone, you know, the like... The mold inhibitors says, and things like that. Look, it was, so, that's the first part of the conversation. It's yeah. like, does the GE kitchen and bath have mold inhibitor? And, like, as long as it doesn't say X, it's fine. And then you go and find out, like, no, it actually has a mold inhibitor in the other ones. They just don't list it because mm. they don't have to. And mm. it's just, like, they, they put it on the kitchen one because it's for water, but yeah. it's also in the other one. And then the other piece of it is, is 
like a lot of that stuff is what they would call a sealant, right? Whereas a lot of the silicone that's used for aquariums, I believe, is not just a sealant, but also an adhesive. Mm. And they, it's actually a different formulation. Mm. So the ones that actually have an aquarium, it's not like, and this is an area where you save five bucks in assembling a box of glass that's gonna hold water in your living room. We saved the five <laughs> bucks in the wrong place. And I don't know. So I don't know. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know about the Gorilla Glue. Somebody would have to there's find out. There's some saying that the Green Top uh, one, and that I, there's different types of Gorilla Glue. I, I've used the Gorilla Glue that was straight cyanoacrylate, you know, mm -hmm. gel, just like any other Loctite or whatever brand you can get from the thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in the long run, I actually think that, like, the cheap. BRS tubes, the 20 ounce tubes, are cheaper than Gorilla Glue. For sure. Yeah, you're paying for the big old brand name there. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I, 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 anyway. In a pinch, sure. Uh, if it was outside of the, 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 the normal type super glue, cyanoacrylate stuff, I, I don't think I would. I don't, there's no reason to risk it. Like, I, like, here's the difference, too, is like when people tell you it's safe or not, it's, there's like degrees of safe. There's like uh, didn't, didn't dead, care. not dead. <laughs> right, and so there's like nothing really in the middle that we know. Because you couldn't point to it. And so in their areas, man, where like if it's if a big enough savings, go for it. If it's saved three dollars, I don't know, gamble on your own tank if you want. Mm. But yeah, that's it. All right, so we're gonna link to it right here. Let, wait, wait, wait. Let us know. Ah, this is the time now. In the end of this conversation, I get two questions actually. Okay. One, is it an aquascape we're building? Is it a habitat we're building? Is it a combination? And if it is a combination for you, which way do you lean? Which I lean, right? I lean coral habitat. I'm, I lean both, I want both on different tanks. Yep. Uh, but like share it. And then also like the difference between Randy and I here in this case, which is would you spend a couple weeks building the perfect aquascape or is it just not worth the time? I don't know. And if you want to go find out a little bit of what that will look like and the time put into it, there's a video right here. I'm building an HNSA, and you can go see the whole thing here. It's taken off. All right. And also, here you go. Go save uh, 300,000 bucks, I guess, uh, in the next <laughs> couple of weeks. Yeah. We'll be in costumes for everybody who thought that we would show up in Randy's fish taco. Uh, I was a fish taco this morning. Wait till tomorrow. I know. I was a big beer. You got to see it tomorrow. So uh, check this out. Go check out their sale. Save 300,000 bucks, I guess. And uh, check out our video.